I'm like a really good student. I've never gotten grades like this. Like, why am I failing now? What's up, you guys? It's Adana. I am back with another video for you guys. Okay, so you guys, you know, again, like I've talked about, hey, PA school is super hard. Um, there's lots of tests and quizzes. Man, like we have to do well. And I think there's like a misconception that everybody in PA school is like, it's like a two-handed misconception, right? Like everybody in PA school is either like super, super smart or everybody in PA school is kind of like lazy and they just didn't want to go the med school route. So they decided to go to PA school. Both of those are myths, they're misconceptions, they are debunked because that is not true. Why are you always lying? And that is what I'm gonna be talking about today or an aspect of that. So, I mean, obviously again, like I can only speak from my school's protect perspective or from my perspective when with dealing with my particular program. Different programs have different ways of doing this. You know, it's good for you to understand how they do that. So I, I believe most of them have it on their website when you go to like curriculum and passing and different th things like that in the sections on their website, they will tell you how they kind of deal with grades and what's passing for them and, and what's not and what's failing. So for me, my program, you have to have a 73% to pass if you get below a 73, so if you get a 72.4, then you failed. And therefore, you know, that's not good um, because it's like, all right, so you fail an exam or a quiz in PA school, now what, right? So what are they gonna do? So with my particular program, semester you get to remediate two exams, the next two semesters you get to remediate one exam. And so with remediation, what that means is you can grade remediate or you can just content remediate. So with content remediation, you're just literally like going over the things that you missed, you're understanding why you missed them and you know the rationale behind why the other answer might have been right. With grade rem remediation, you're doing the same thing but also you're given the opportunity to raise your grade. So you can choose to grade remediate and if you do you have the it's like two options so it will bring you up 15% or as many percent to a 70. So you can't like score a 76 and then be like, hey, I wanna grade remediate for 15% and then bring yourself up, what, a 91. No, that's not gonna, that's not how it works. So you can, you can grade remediate if you had lower than a set, like let's say you had a 72 again, right? So do you really wanna grade remediate for that 7% or whatever the number was that I gave before, do you want to grade remediate up to a 73? Because you're literally right there. So is it going to change your grade? Or do you want to hold on to that grade remediation for when it might be really needed? Because it's not to say that you're going to pass every single test that you take in PA school. Some people do, but some people don't. So with respect to that, do you want to hold on to it as a safety net, as a safekeeping? Or do you want to grade remediate? And that is up to you. But but for the most part, I don't think people would grade remediate with like a 72. Usually it's if they got like a 60 something and then they'll grade remediate up to a 73. With respect to that, you know, you have to maintain your 73%. You have to maintain a 3.0 stay in, you know, like in good academic standing. You can't fail any, ex um, any, any classes. So if you fail a class, it's grounds for automatic dismissal. If you fail a test, it's not grounds for automatic dismissal, but you have to have greater than a 3.0 cumulative GPA. Even if you may have gotten like a C because you can't get anything below a C, even if you've gotten a C, as long as you are at a 3.0 GPA. So with respect to any further grade remediations, like I said, you have first semester and then one on the rest, like the other semesters. When you fail your exam or if you fail your exam and you grade remediate, then your score will change. Um, if you choose not to and you just like content remediate because once you get below 73, I believe you have to content remediate regardless, but you don't have to grade remediate, that's on you. So if you, when you content remediate and then it's just gonna make you more aware of it for when the final comes around because the final is gonna be cumulative. So it's important to do that anyways, but not necessarily important to do a grade remediation. And I. I know that a lot of schools do have a remediation process, kind of like, a, again, like I said, a safety net so that 
hey, if you don't do well on this particular exam, if you don't meet that 73, some schools have 75 as their passing. It's just two more percentage than my school, but it, those percentage points, like it, it just feels high. However they have it set it, be it, be it a B, or you know a C at 75% or C plus whatever whatever their standard is they usually have a safety net for that and that is remediation that's usually how they handle you know bad grades or failing grades in PA school obviously uh, if you kind of if you fail out of the class it's up to them to kick you out of the program but it's not to say that they're gonna automatically do that because let's say you fail a class well I don't know because if you fail the class in like the summer session that that is contingent you know, upon progressing to the next section of that class, I don't think you can actually do it. So um, yeah, if you fail a class, you're done. However, if you don't meet the GPA, that doesn't necessarily mean you're done, okay? Although you have to maintain that 3.0 GPA to progress to each semester, for some reason you can bring your cumulative GPA up in the fall session, let's say you didn't do so well summer, but you can bring it up fall and then you can maintain that in spring, then you're fine. But if let's say you drop in fall and then you continue to drop in spring, then you can't progress to clinical year and then you're out of the program. But they want you to progress, so they do everything that they can ensure that you're getting all the help that you need. Don't be afraid to ask for help. Um, if you're going through anything like this right now, or if you have gone through it, um, I'm sure you're, you know, like asking for help, from your peers, from the professors, is very essential in helping you continue to progress and kind of navigate this whole like thing that can look like a bad stigma. It's like, oh man, like I'm like a really good student. I've never gotten grades like this. Like, why am I failing now? Because it's a totally different system, right? And so because of that, you have to now understand how to navigate it and understand how to use the tools necessary to help you be successful in the future. That's usually how they do it with my program. Obviously, you can can look and see what the different schools programs do they'll have that for the most part listed on their website and if not you can ask them about that. just do your research right that's what it always boils down to do your research <laughs> i hope this was helpful for those of you who had that question if you have any further questions on like grades and the grading system and the scale that they're on just let me know in the comment section below and i'll be sure to get that information for you as fast as i can and if you haven't already done so go ahead and follow me on instagram at azana the p Thank you guys so much for watching. I will talk to you guys. If you're looking for a video on a specific topic, simply type in what you're looking for in my channel search bar. And if I have videos addressing that topic, it will take you right to them.